another catch anything session on the Isle of Grain, but as usual I'm hoping to catch a few flatfish. This time I'm fishing the tank traps or dragon's teeth beach and I'm using sheppy rigs. I'll go through how I make these a little bit later on in the video and if you just come here for the tutorial then the timestamp for that is in the description below. I've arrived in good time for a change with the tide not yet hitting the beach. The short snud rig is for fishing at distance but I'll also set up a long snud version for fishing closer in. I'll be using dungy blacks and freshly dug blow lug. I'm threading the worms onto size 3 Nordic bend hooks. Later on, towards the top of the tide, I'm hoping to drop a rig close in alongside that patch of little rocks to my left. To begin with though, a distance cast is required since there's very little water at the moment and I've got to be careful that my lead doesn't get stuck in that mud. As I'm casting, I'm attempting to feather the line as the rig is dropping. A few sharp pulls is also required to ensure that the lead is not stuck in the mud. Later on when the tide is in, that's not so much of a problem. Today I'm using my Comic Arcadia Beach Ledger Rods with FX9 reels and mono. I'm keeping a close eye on the rod that I've already cast out, but I'm not really expecting a bite this early. As I'm setting up my second rod, I'll run through the locational details. I've indicated some nearby venues before homing in on Grain, which is on the eastern part of the Hoo Peninsula, which is at the mouth of the Thames Estuary on the Kent side. Yanlet Creek and Coalmouth Creek were once joined to form the Isle of Grain. Thames Port and a power station can be seen from the Essex side of the Thames, and I've previously covered marks in Grain Coastal Park and along the sea wall. To reach the mark I'm fishing, you park in the car park at Grain Coastal Park and walk along the beach at low tide. You can walk all the way to the MOD fence and there's also a cliff top path which I haven't used yet. The reel I'm putting on here has 14 pound Terry Eustace mono. I'd rather be using braid but I haven't yet got enough spare spools for these reels yet and my reels double up for barbel fishing on large rivers like the Trent. I've also contemplated using these rods for that purpose as well. However, I'm here to catch flatfish so no more of that nonsense. I'm cutting off about a foot of a main line before tying on a shock leader. If I'm not casting very far out, I don't always use shock leaders but I might need to be casting a little bit further today so I am putting one on. I'm using 26 pound stern as my shock leader and just a simple double uni knot to attach it to the main line. The 
for fishing close in here, I like to use a long snow to Sheppy rig, and mine are stored on flat winders. Once again, the fresh lug is threaded onto size free mustard Nordic bent hooks. A three or four ounce flat lead is plenty big enough. The rig is fully loaded and ready for casting out, so I'll just quickly run through how I make these. Feel free to skip this bit if you only want to see them in use. I tend to use the same pattern over and over again, but I do have them in different configurations should I need to use them. Those with hook lengths up to 30cm are referred to as short snud versions, and anything longer than that as long snud. If I'm using hook lengths of a metre or so, then I prefer to make them as two up one down versions. These rigs also work well with line through leads in a Wessex rig style configuration. Here I'll just be making a standard rig with hook lengths of about 40 centimetres. In pointing out the components needed, I just want to mention one or two bits which I'm particularly fond of. First of all, these stop beads that slide onto your hook length without the need of stop knots. They are very cheap, direct from China. I prefer to use swivels in two sizes, with your hook lengths being attached to the smaller ones. The larger ones are for your rig body line to pull through in a sort of pulley style, with a soft oval beads cushioning this. If you want your rigs to be extra free running, you can use carp anglers, big eye swivels and fairly large drennan stop beads. Rig clips are needed to attach your leads and to your main line. Hook choice will depend on what you're actually fishing for. I like Nordic bends for flatfish and I start off by making my hook lengths with 10 pound Maxima. Red seems to work well for me, but I'd also use clear fluorocarbon. So on goes a 6mm stop bead, followed by a sequin. Tie on my hooks, I generally use uni knots and I pass the line through the loop between four and six turns. You should really wet your knot as you're tightening it, but I won't show the dribbling saliva part. Nail clippers are useful for trimming off the tag end. If you find that your stop bead is not tight enough, or loosens whilst fishing, you can always tie a stop knot behind it. All of my hook lengths for this rig are going to be just under 40cm long, so I need to measure them out and cut them to this length. Once I've got my hook lengths, I work on a main rig body and I'm using 45 pound Barclay Pro Spec. I'm measuring and cutting three lengths of about 48 centimetres. Moving the hook lengths out of the way, the remaining components are for the main rig body. As previously mentioned, I'll be using the small swivels with the 8mm oval beads. You could just use large swivels of the same size like this example, but I find you get more tangles with your rigs. I find that swivels on their own don't allow your hook length to stand off from the rig that much. You can improve on this by adding one of those oval beads. The 
swivel that you attach your hook length to stands off a little bit more. But I find that a better solution is to use a smaller swivel and countersink it into one of those oval beads. So in order to do that I need to widen the hole at one end of a bead. There's probably a better ways of doing this but I just use pliers and a drill bit. The rig body line is threaded through the bead and one of those small swivels is attached using a uni knot. As with all of your knots it helps to moisten it with saliva. Cut the tag end off and if you've enlarged the hole in the bead big enough you should be able to pull your knot into that hole and part of your swivel as well. Then thread on a large swivel onto the line behind the bead and repeat this process another two times. If it works out properly you'll see that small swivel stands off that much better. Once you've got your three sets done take an extra bit of body line and tie that onto the end of one of the large swivels. To the end of this tie on the clip that you're going to use to attach your lead to. So this then forms the lower part of your rig. You can shorten this length of line if you want to make your rig a two up one down version. Naturally you attach your hook length to a small swivel. I tend to leave that to last after I've finished making the whole of a rig's main body. In order to do that move to the loose end of your line and tie on the next large swivel. Once you've done that, repeat the process for the third and final time. Then, with the remaining loose end, tie whatever you're going to use to attach your rig to your reel line. I like to use Gemini clips on my rigs with a large swivel on my reel line. For those not familiar with uni knots, I've deliberately not speeded up this part. Since the line is quite thick, it should be fairly clear to see how the whole knot is formed. Here, I'm going through the loop three or four times but if the line was a lot thinner, it would be a few more turns. Once you've tightened the knot and cut off the tag end, your rig is pretty much finished. All that remains to do is to attach your hook lengths. You could even store your snuds separately from your rig and attach whatever you feel is necessary when you're out on the beach. The main reason why I like Chevy rigs is that each of your snuds is free running and that gives less resistance to fish that's biting. Like carp anglers, you could take it one step further and use large eye swivels. They should make your rigs even more free running and offer even less resistance. I have a few rigs made up like this, but haven't yet found a need to use them. But if you are getting lots of snatch bites and can't hit them, it may be something worth considering. Okay, it's back to the fishing. As you can see, I set up right at the strand line. The tide has now hit the beach, and I've had two early scoldy bass which I didn't film. I thought I'd have the beach to myself, but I was surprised to find that three other anglers turned up and set up between myself and the MOD fence. That ruled out any chance of fishing the inside line that I was expecting to. I couldn't really chuck my long snood shuffy rig right in front of them to fish that feature, so I'm going to have to just cast it somewhere towards them, but nowhere near where they're fishing. I'll have to come back and fish those rocks on another occasion. That hasn't put me off, and I've just had a bite on the rig which I was going to fish there, but I'm casting it much further out. Unfortunately, the fish comes off as I'm winding it in. I'm picking up a little bit of weed, but nothing to be concerned about. The bait looked untouched, so there's no need to replace it.
I'm still dragging the rig after casting to make sure the lead hasn't sunk in the mud. This is the first of my widening and you may notice I swapped my lead over to a different type of flat lead. This one's slightly larger than I started off with at distance since there's a bit more of a tidal pull and also find that this shape tends to rise up in the water quicker so it's much better on the retrieval. I only wish I could remember where I bought it from since I think this is the last one I've got of this pattern. The lead also has an arrowhead shape which I think helps with the casting at distance. Another fish responds to dragging the long snood rig. A pin whiting on the bottom snood. A slightly firmer strike is required on the distance rig. I wouldn't be hitting bites this hard if I was using braid, but because of the extra stretch in the mono, you need it in order to set the hook. There's also more give in these beach ledger rods than the beach casters I normally use. Double shot of reasonably sized whiting. I'm still hopeful of catching some flounders, possibly a decent sized bass. This is just another whiting knife.
It's now right at the top of the tide and the action slowed down a little bit. Well, that was unexpected. Didn't think I heard anything on there. Decided to wind into a couple of taps I've had on the inside line. And it feels like there's something on. And that's more like it, a flounder on a bottom snud. It's still the top for tide, and I'm surprised that pikes are coming thick and fast. Normally you have to wait until it starts going down for that to happen. Occasionally I'm making a couple of casts in the direction of those small rocks but still nowhere near where those other anglers are fishing.
This part of the beach is a little bit exposed since you haven't got the cliffs behind and the wind's picked up a little bit. Another flounder falls to the Sheppy rig, but this time on a middle snood. I was expecting more as the tide is ebbing, but it seems that today most of the action is towards the end of the top of the tide. A little schooly to finish up on, and I've had nine today, none much bigger than the whiting. So in total, eleven whiting, nine schoolies, and two flounders. I know that this mark has got some potential, and was once noted for codling, so I'll definitely be back to have another go.